Among piles of unwanted items, one person's trash becomes another's treasure. It's an Etrog box that the owner's father found in the garbage on the streets of New York's East Coast. The box must be made by a Jewish person. It was made in the 1920s, and the writing on it is in Hebrew style. The Etrog box is a unique treasure, expertly crafted from various pieces by a skilled artisan. Each pattern of silver is different from the others. Lamb's wool is inside to keep fruits fresh, and it closes and opens nicely. How much will the box be worth, being from the garbage? And I would think this could bring upwards of two, three thousand dollars, so a fair amount of money. Wow. Yeah, so it's a quite a nice piece, and I'm glad, uh, yeah. glad you brought it here. And my mother was yelling, don't take it out of the garbage. <laughs> well, good thing, good thing he did. Good thing he oh. did. This antique is a scientific instrument containing a lunar and solar calendar dial, sundial, and a compass, all in the same box. The owner acquired it through exchanging it for something else because he found it interesting. This compendium stands out for its multifunctionality, housing a lunar and solar calendar dial, a universal equinoctial sundial, and a compass, all in one box. However, some modifications, like signs of previous engravings on the dial, might affect its value among collectors. The intriguing compendium, possibly crafted by Schistler, is valued at a couple of thousand pounds due to its unique alterations. Yet, if left unaltered, its worth could soar above 50,000 pounds. I'm afraid we're looking here perhaps a couple of thousand pounds at best. It's quite high anyway, I think. This is a fantastic model car brought by our guest. It belonged to the guest father, a cherished gift from his childhood. It's never been played with and has always been kept in the box. Crafted by the renowned German toy company Guntherman. Well, this car was made to commemorate the Silver Bullet Sunbeam car. They had held the world speed records. The legacy of Guntherman began in 1826. Renowned for exquisite craftsmanship, it stood as one of Germany's oldest and most esteemed toy manufacturers, celebrated for its superior quality toys. There aren't many of these tin-plate toys still in existence. This one was made in the 1930s and would fetch at least 1,200 pounds to 1,800 pounds at auction. Wow. That's amazing. This stunning necklace features a beautiful amethyst pendant set in gold, dating back to 1780s England. The owner discovered this necklace and a ring in a trunk in their basement while cleaning out their late mother-in-law's belongings. Crafted in England around 1780, this necklace bears the mark of skilled craftsmanship from the Georgian era. What sets this necklace apart is its rare amethyst gemstone, a favorite among imperial families for its deep purple hue. The necklace's design and length make it not only a valuable piece, but also very wearable and stylish. Its estimated value today is around $25,000 due to its historical significance, the quality of its materials, and the craftsmanship of its design. That would be a current retail value for it today. Oh my gosh, wow. This guest brings a lovely box passed down from his father for appraisal. It is believed to be made by Capodamonte, a famous Italian porcelain factory. Peace has the company's mark, but it's not made by the company and has largely been used through its lifetime for deception. When we see the mark, we almost always assume that it was made at the very best at the end of the 19th century. It's an exquisite piece, expertly done with hand-painted designs and figural patterns. It's believed to be of Italian origin and made by the Ginori factory. And the Ginori factory kind of kept the flame alive of 18th century Italian porcelain. And they had a line of porcelain that they actually called Capo de Monte. The quality, the painting, the modeling, and the color scheme are all characteristics of that. The ebonized wood stand indicates that the piece was probably exhibited at an international showcase, as the stand is usually absent in ordinary pieces. It's valued at... We would place an estimate on it between $3,000 and $5,000. Innovation meets class with this piece. The guest bought this lovely table in 1986 for $1,800. It is made of oak and is exquisitely designed. 
It has certain distinct features that represent various eras. We can see this element here, which is very Victorian, late 19th century. As we drop down the leg, we see these cross members here and these through tenons. A design element that is mainly seen in the arts and crafts movement. It is a transitional piece indicating movement from the Victorian to the arts and crafts era. You can really date this to a very specific time, like 1895 to 1900. And in that time in America, it's very innovative. This table has some unique components. Tambour top is one, as it allows its expansion fascinatingly. We just simply pull out this handle yep. and crank it. The mechanism of its movement makes it more amazing to behold. This one-of-a-kind furniture is valued at... Probably, if we were to put it in auction, I would estimate it at two to 3000 This video, give a thumbs up. Thanks a lot. This fascinating artifact was found in the yard of the guest. The stone carving is believed to be of Celtic origin and to have existed since around the 3rd century AD. Similar heads are found around Hadrian's Wall. Oh. But the difficulty in dating this one is we haven't found it in a sort of an archaeological context. No. It was in your drain. Yeah. <laughs> it is a medieval piece with a mysterious origin and there is no written evidence indicating what it was made for. But they're often found near water, because beneath the surface of the water were the spirit worlds, and some people think these were used to communicate with the spirits. The appraiser values it at... I would say that should you put this in auction, it should make at least three to five thousand pounds. Right. So do you make that an old drain find? I know, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This person has an amazing snow babies collection. The owner's grandmother used to decorate with snow babies around the Christmas tree, but her mother kept them in a box carefully. These were made in Germany in the early 20th century. There are two theories about these snow babies. The first theory suggests that these were made by Hertwig and Company, inspired by Victorian Christmas traditions. The other theory is that Admiral Peary, the U.S. explorer, had a daughter whose picture went viral in newspapers. He's worth about $300. These are very, very special. The estimated value for these snow babies ranges between $3,350 to $4,250. These majestic shoes have remarkable qualities. Unlike most shoes from the late 19th to early 20th century, which were typically black, these shoes stood out with their vibrant purple silk and cream-colored leather. Additionally, they were in remarkable condition considering their age. Marked New York on the bottom, they held a unique charm. Typically, shoes of similar style in black leather might fetch around $75 to $100, but these are exceptional. Due to their unique color combination, excellent condition, and the use of silk and leather, a pair like these recently sold at auction for an impressive $460. So that's a lot, actually, for that's a, a pair of for shoes. shoes. <laughs> yes. The guest presented a box from her family heirloom collection. It was acquired by her mother's cousin many years ago, who had taken pottery classes from Margaret Cable at the University of North Dakota. And then when classes were all done, Margaret was selling some of her extra pieces. The box was purchased for just $1.50, marked down from $3. The appraiser observed the signature M. Cable on the back of the box, along with a classic mark indicating that it had met their standard. And then we see this number 162. And what was fascinating, in 1938, they started documenting the pieces that were being sold. North Dakota's quality clay made the pottery popular and highly valuable. The box featured a cowboy riding a horse with an incised top. The estimated value ranged between eight to twelve hundred dollars. Wow, really nice. The next item was found in a special way by our guest. He found a unique little Buddha. The guest found it with the help of a metal detector on the beach in Western Australia. We think it's a baby Buddha, but its origins, its age, we're just not sure. It was made around the 1420s. This Buddha is possibly the oldest Chinese artifact in Australian history. Ming Dynasty origins make it a rare find. 
This infant Buddha was used in religious ceremonies to celebrate Buddha's birthday. People pour purified water and tea on it, which is why it's always made of bronze. What could its estimate value be? If the hammer fell at 10,000, we'd be surprised? No. If it fell at 50,000, would we be surprised? No. And I think even if it made 100,000, I don't think I'd be that surprised. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. The owner wants to pay tribute to his late friend by creating a museum in his honor through the sale of the Buddha. This is a portrait of Fanny Fletcher, the owner's great-great-grandmother. It was painted when Fanny was 20 years old in 1817, making the painting over 200 years old. The portrait is a significant example of American folk portraiture. It's likely that the artist was Thomas Ware from Vermont, who painted portraits primarily in the early 19th century. Despite a possible later frame, the portrait is in excellent condition. The estimated value of this painting in an auction is between eight to $12,000. The owner brought a diorama believed to be made by their great-grandfather, and their grandmother disliked it, so they kept it in the basement. The diorama features elements of heavy paper and carved wood with intentionally disproportionate proportions. With its uniqueness, it's estimated that its auction value will be around $2,500 to $3,000. This was definitely the best diorama they've seen on the show in their lengthy tenure. Wow. This is certainly the best one I've seen on Roadshow, and I've been doing this show for a is that right? quarter century. These miniature melon baskets were found by the owner in their mother's attic while preparing for an estate sale. Why didn't you put them in the estate sale? Because I liked them. Ah. <laughs> okay, okay. The baskets were made of oak, with dyed oak used for decoration. The bright yellow color is likely derived from natural dyes, such as sumac or onion peels, while the brown may come from walnut shells. Dating such baskets is challenging, and they could have been made as late as the Depression era. When asked about their value, the owner was totally surprised. Yeah, I think if I, I found them in an antique shop, I would expect to pay maybe $200, $300 a piece for them. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well. The owner's great-grandfather had a two-piece construction sword belt that the owner believes belonged to one of his brothers who fought in the war. It's identified as a Richmond-style sword belt made in Richmond. The belt features two pieces of sandcast brass and is known for its distinctive pattern. The estimated retail value is astounding. And this one would retail for about $3,500. Wow. 